In this video, you get to know the full Corel Draw introduction for beginners, and we start right now. What is happening? My name is Dennis. If this is your first time here, in this channel we do lots of tech reviews and we help graphic designers find success in their career. So what are you waiting for? Jump in and click the subscribe button, hit on the bell so you won't miss any video. Corel Draw is a vector-based program made from a company called Corel. It is used to create vectors and save files as vector files. Many people see CorelDRAW as a software that is very hard to operate, but I dare you it's very simple. You only need a couple of skills in graphic design, then you know that CorelDRAW is very simple. A link to my playlist will be on the video description so you can watch all the videos that will guide you through your graphic design training. Once you launch your CorelDRAW, this is what you see. And the next thing you want to do is to create a new document by simply clicking here. But before then, you will have to know other things about this particular screen, which is you have your open recent. Why you've not seen any file here is because I just installed this Corel Draw recently and I've not done anything with it yet. So any job you've done before and you would like to see it again, all of them will be on the open recent. Open others means you want to open a file, a Corel Draw file somewhere else. Well, the new from templates are originally made files by Corel Draw. So we would like to create a new document before I go straight into the video. And once you click on the new document, you will see a dialog box like this where you have to set how you want your document to look like. Now you have your size, your column and the name of your file and every other thing else. Remember we talked about color in our last video. Here you set the color space you want to work with either RGB or CMYK. For now let me leave it at CMYK and 300 dpi because it's going to be a print document and my size is A4 size and every other thing will be left like this. So in the name, I can choose to save it anything I want, but for now I will leave it this way. So, okay, and this is what you have here. So you have to note all these bars in your Corel Draw and we are going to name them one after the other. And the first bar is menu bar. We have the status bar and the standard bar here, the property bar and the toolbox. All these bars will help you to work effectively in your Corel Draw. If you right click here, you'll be able to customize how your workspace will look like. Now, this is the menu bar. If I deactivate this, my menu bar is out. And if I right click and activate it again, my menu bar is on. So you can do the same to others. Why this particular part are not activated is because all other tools here works with this. So once you click on that particular tool, CorelDRAW automatically activates this tools for you for example the zoom tool is not activated and if i need to do anything with zoom once i click on the zoom tool automatically corridor activates the zoom bar here for me now let's talk critically on all the bars i have mentioned the menu bar in your menu bar you have the file where you can open a new document and open recent or other stuff close documents and other stuff you can save your file here and also save as acquire image that if you want to import image from another source and every other thing that has to do with your file comes here and the edit it's mostly when you are working with lots of files then you can use this to do your job then view it's just simply how you want your job to look like 
you have the rulers and the guidelines now if i if i deactivate the rulers you see that my rulers here are off remember your rulers guide you when you are designing so you have to let your rulers be activated and here also we have the guidelines the guidelines especially when you want to do a job that you need to guide your job these are the guidelines these are the guidelines but if you deactivate the guidelines you won't get it at all and the next thing we like to look at is the layout in your layout you have where you can set your page number and every other stuff the page orientation either landscape or portrait but you can simply click here if you want your page to be landscape and also here if you want it to be portrait and these are the objects there are lots of things you need to know inside here and as we move on with our tutorials you get to know most of this stuff effect any effect you need to add in your career job jobs you come to effect example the bevel effect the extrude envelope and all other stuff and here is when you are working with bitmap especially jpeg files or you want to add other effects to your jobs for now they are not active because there is no element selected here and this is your text any text or typography you'll be working with this helps you to edit it perfectly and the tables the tools windows here you can customize how your windows will look like your workspace and every other stuff of your color palette here you can choose the color palette you want to work with in your corel job and always visit help if you have any challenges with your career and you need to resolve it now we come back to toolbars in your toolbar you have the pick tool here and if if you click and hold you will see other tools inside the pick tool which you can easily select them and this is the free hand pick and free transform for now you leave it at pick tool and this is the shape tool if you click and hold you see other tools here that can help you work with corel draw and this is the crop tool using cropping your files the knife tool and eraser tool i don't need to explain these tools once you click on them you see what they actually do and this is the zoom tool and the pan tool the pan tool helps you to move your coral draw to any direction you can move it to any direction and while the zoom tool helps you to zoom in and also zoom out you can easily click it to zoom and click it to zoom out as time goes on you learn the shortcut keys for all this stuff the z is used to activate the zoom tool while h is used to activate the pan tool and also we have other stuff here the freehand two point line bezier tool all these are used to create curves they are used to create curves especially the freehand you can easily create any curve you want to create with your corel draw and that is the work of freehand tool but i love using pen tool so much because it helps me to create my curves and also create straight lines in any way i want to create i create customized shapes with my pen tool and do lots of things with my pen tool with this pen tool alone you won't even need to use any other tool because pen tool alone will give you everything you need now we move to the artistic tool the artistic tool helps you to draw stuff like an artist but i don't really love this tool because for me it's useless so let me delete all this off and then move to the rectangle to it tells you to draw shapes in corel draw especially the square shape now once you click and drag you draw any shape desired square shape or rectangle shape of your choice but if you want your shape to be a square click control and click and drag it will give you a, a square that has four equal sides but if you leave your control you hardly get an equal side of your square same thing to this ellipse too once you click and drag you you won't get the, the you won't get the desired circle shape as it is i'm getting over an oblong shape but if you click your control automatically your circle remains a standard and a round circle with 360 degrees 
and this is the polygon to the star to complex star if you need to draw a graph you use these and the spiral basic shapes arrows flowcharts banners and color shapes all these helps you to draw different types of shapes in your corel draw and here is the text tool and also the table with your text tool you can activate and type anything you need to type with your corel draw and resize it and every other stuff once you activate your text tool you have this bar here that helps you to edit your text like you can change your fonts here the font size make it bold or italics and also underline your text here and here we have to edit the alignment of your text either it's left aligned or center right full justify or false justify and all this here has their shortcuts if you learn and know all this stuff you know how to justify them even without clicking here just use the shortcut to work with your text and I will move on straight to another tool here, which is a parallel dimension and every other. So all these are used to create lines and every other stuff here that are very wonderful. As time goes on, you get to know this, but for now you need to study the most important tools, which are these ones. And here will be used to make effects, especially when working with type and every other stuff. You have your drop shadow here. If you need to drop any shadow with your corel draw, do simply click the shadow tool and click on anything you want to drop the shadow and drag. Then the shadow is out. You set your shadow to any direction. Once you activate your shadow tool, you can edit your shadows here to anything you want you have the blending modes here which you can easily choose the screen or anything you need to do with your shadow to edit it and make it look nice and you can deactivate your shadow once you click this particular part here remember this tutorial is done with Corel X7 and the tools on Corel X7 and the workspace may not be the same with the current Corel Draw you are using. Many people will be using X8 by now and try to adjust. I know all these tools are the same, but you just need to know where the tools are located. That's all. And the next thing I would like us to know is the contour tool. Use it to create contours whenever you are making your editing, maybe stuff like this. You can edit your contours here and this is how contours are made and you just have to be creative to make your contours more beautiful and if you need to break this contour out simply come to object and break contour apart it will help you to break this contour out if you don't want to go through the long cut and you need to break this contour simply due to the nature of color draw click on the stuff you want to edit move it somewhere else and control z then press ctrl k and simply your object will break apart and if you click outside and click on the con click on the contour again and you know it has been broken such that you can change the colors of the contour easily and this is how i edit my contours most times here is another wonderful to the blend to distort and envelope to also extrude to this is the work of the extrude tool it helps you to extrude anything you want to make a 3d now this text is in 3d why you are not seeing it is because the 3d background is black so if i change this you will easily see what is happening here so this is what i mean you used to make your type or any other object to be in 3d and i would like to show us the transparency tool also which you can easily use the transparency tool to transparent any stuff you need to do for example i want to transparent this shape here i click on the transparency tool click on it and drag and the down part has been blended to the white background on my corel draw and that is how to use the transparency tool if i need to transparent the four sides it means i need to bitmap this particular image so i will click bitmap and convert to bitmap that is when you know that you've edited your shape very well before you bitmap then i have already done the transparency here and i want to transparent this other side also so i do this 
Now, bitmapping an object before you transparent means you want to apply the transparency to different sides of that object and this is how it's done if i need to transparent this other side also i have to bitmap it again and also apply the transparency to this other side by doing this and this is how it's done so that's all for transparency tool and this is the eye drop tool the eye drop tool helps you to pick a color somewhere and apply it to a particular place for example i need to apply this color to another shape here so clicking on this color and bring it like your pen tool here and bring it here this is how the eye drop tool works so now i've been able to pick this color and apply it to other shapes and also if you open it you see the eye drop attribute it's also an eye drop tool which helps you to attribute eye drops and all other stuff and now we come to the interactive feel which helps you to make a kind of color gradient in your shape for example i need to mix this color with another color and once i activate my feel tool and do this i can easily add another color here and this is how the fill to work and the mesh fill here also works like the interactive fill it helps you to mix different colors in a particular shape with them you will get to know how to use all the tools effectively i forgot to tell you about the colors this is where you you will see your colors where you can choose any color you need and any color you choose here will definitely appear here which means you may likely use that color again once you create a new document this particular part will not be available again so for now i think that is all stick on and keep on watching my videos on corel draw you will get to know how to work with corel draw perfectly and many videos on corel draw guide will be coming to help you for now this is only a beginner's tutorial you need to know those tools and know how to use your workspace perfectly thanks so much for watching this video and see you back next time